Guys, welcome back to the Dorky and 40 channel. I am Chad, and today we are going to update one of our quads here and take a look at the new beta flight configurator 10.5. Now, this is still in a beta release candidate status. It should be public hopefully any day, but if you're in a hurry to flash this and get all the extra little features, I'm going to link a video in the description to uh, Mark Spatz UAV Tech channel. He has a video on there that will show you how to do this through Chrome and the development mode. Super easy. I have flashed three quads uh, this weekend using this and I've tested all of them and I've had no problems. So the little extra features that you get in the configurator make things a whole lot better and give you a lot more visibility to a lot of the features that are in beta flight 4.0 or at least in a release candidate and coming to the full-blown version soon so without any hesitation let's update this acro so the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to have a notepad open and i am going to connect to the acro brat here and I'm going to do a diff, and what that's going to do is that is going to just copy everything that is going to be different between the release version and the version that I'm going to flash on here. Because I'm not going to want to flash things like, because I'm not going to want to flash things like the accelerometer calibration values and things like that. So I've got that copied and pasted here, and so we're going to exit. And now we are going to go into your firmware flasher and release candidate. And this has a, oh, what does this have on it? Let's look at our notepad again. This is a omnibus something or other, a CL Racing F4. Yes, this is a Talon F4. So CL Racing F4, full chip erase, erase. And I'm going to click on update firmware here, load firmware online, and we'll see if it will flash without me having to press the DFU button. Eh, it's not going to. All right, had to do a little surgery there. So now we are in the firmware flasher, and we're going to go ahead and flash this baby. You can see I had to take the top off to get to the bootloader button, which is right there. Just hard to get to. I like them when they're on the edge, that's for sure. It makes things a lot easier. Okay, now that is complete. We're going to go ahead and connect up here and make sure everything is level. We're going to reset the settings on this a couple times just to make sure that we're good. We're going to do a quick calibration of the accelerometer. Now we're gonna go into CLI and we're going to pull up our notepad here. And we're just gonna put in uh, some of the stuff that we know that we're not going to change at all. Um, like we can put in our FFT frequency here and we can look at that later when we fly. So just copy and paste that. And then we're gonna skip all of this and going to go ahead and copy all of that. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the rates, even though I have found that my rates have been a little different. And then we're just going to hit save. Connect back up here and take a look at everything to make sure that was all entered in correctly. That looks good. Change my motor idle percentage. Um, all of this looks good. Save and reboot. And power and battery. That looks good. 
Um, what do I want to do here? I am going to change this to 0.25 and 1260. Personal preference there. Anti-gravity at seven. I'm just gonna fly it with uh, stock pids probably. I am probably gonna bump these up a couple points and the advance just to make that go faster. We can talk about that in some other videos. Check the filters. 850, that seems a little high. We'll put that down to 650 and save that. I'm gonna turn off this second D-pad, D-term filter because I don't feel that it is needed. All right, check our receiver. I've recently worked on my gimbals, so I'm gonna move the dead band back down to one. Check our modes, OSD. All of that looks good. So now let's take a look at the configurator itself and what might be different. So here you can see we are running 10.5. Right off the bat, you'll see like this update firmware, which just saves you from going in and out of screens, connecting and disconnecting. It'll kind of do all that for you. Everything looks the same here. Your ports, everything pretty much looks the same. Nothing really different in here. Uh, configuration, nothing has really added or changed inside here. Or power and battery. But in PID tuning, this is where things get a little bit different. So, of course, you can see all of the new default PIDs that they have uh, added in here. And we also have these D-min settings, which I highly suggest you read over them. We've got a little bit of detail on here. I found that I just need to increase mine a little bit. And on a more responsive, lower, uh, so 6S, 3S, uh, 6S, 3-inch type of stuff, I have actually upped my advance a little bit. I haven't really played the game with the gain, but I've uh, changed the roll and pitch uh, up a couple points. And these are, it, you can kind of read through here and get your own ex explanation of it whenever you go through and upgrade your configurator. Highly recommend that. Everything here is pretty much the same. Uh, throttle limit and throttle percentage is on here now. And I am going to scale mine to 90% so it will automatically uh, give me a little bit more stick resolution and get rid of the top 10% of that throttle which is good in the filters tab here's that FFT uh, frequency that I've been talking about nonstop in all these videos this is how you tune the auto dynamic uh, cascading notch your D term 150 and 150 these are all also automatic now they're you can see right here, um, completely dynamic. Now you can change these if you want to. So it's gonna have to leave everything the way it is right there. Nothing really new in the receivers tab. The modes look a little bit different. Adjustments we never use, servos, motors. OSD, so here you can see now that you can set up multiple profiles for your OSD and you can kind of click what things you want on and then you can put this on a switch so you can turn things on and off depending upon if you want to enjoy the scenery, if you're doing a nice long range cruise, that kind of stuff. Uh, the most important stuff down here. Uh, here is where you can turn on that max FFT after the end in your post-flight statistics. So this is the number that you're gonna take and you're gonna add 50 to it and then you are going to plug it into here and that is going to be your maximum number for the dynamic notch to work with. Um, I also see link quality here, and I haven't tried this out on one of my Crossfire builds yet. I need to turn it on and look, but it looks like you can actually get link quality displayed now instead of the true RSSI value up here, because uh, it says um, alternative indicator for link quality based on frame loss used with caution. So it's kind of new, I guess. So, but we have... Uh, 
a graph of motor diagnostics right here that we can play with now. We got all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, we've got stick overlays, which we have had. So you can turn your stick overlays on and have those uh, while you're flying. That's just totally awesome. So a little bit different setup and look, but everything is pretty much the same with some little added tweaks here and there. So yeah, that's about it. I mean, there's not like a whole lot, but the little features that they have added in there for us to, to pick and choose from uh, really are going to make things and set up a lot easier. And the rumor is that they're going to add a little bit more and more. So hopefully we'll get a couple more of those numbers and some better explanations of what those numbers actually do. And hopefully they get rid of some of the stuff that we don't use because, you know, for beginners, I think it could definitely be a little overwhelming for some people. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot. Like and subscribe. Talk to you later.